this Cuban sandwich. It has roast pork on it, Swiss cheese, pickles, and it's uh, grilled on a panini press. So it has a really good crisp taste on the outside. It's gooey with cheese, Swiss cheese coming out the outside. Florida is where the Cuban sandwich actually originated from. Uh, down in South Florida, people uh, cooking this for the Cuban workers, the migrant workers, and it became a big hit spread globally from there. I'm telling y'all, this is the sandwich is banging. Um, I had a little, just a little snippet of it before we started. Again, we want to thank everybody for watching us, viewing us, sharing us. Um, and just like our, we have our um, shirts on tonight. If y'all can see our shirts, this is the mission. It says God is, God's word is like butter spreading all over. And so that is our mission to spread God's word all over. And we're just doing it. Food is just the avenue that we're doing it through. I'm sure every one of you have your own avenues. But tap into what, what God is doing. We are excited about our meal tonight. Um, so, you ready? Absolutely. Don't you want to just got me hanging? Like, come on now. <laughs> Don't be leaving me hanging. Um, I'm not leaving you hanging. Let us pray before we get started. Yes, let's pray. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you, God, for this meal that you have given us to prepare tonight, Father. Yes, we pray, God, that you will be in the midst of us, Father. We are doing this for your kingdom, say, God, that your kingdom will be um, edified, edified in your name be glorified, Father. We thank you for the opportunity to share who you are with the world, God, um, through um, food as an avenue, God. God, we thank you that you're, being, you're feeding our souls as well as our spirit, God. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we get ready to get started with cooking for you today. The Cuban sandwich is a good, fun sandwich, especially with game day and things like that here. If you want to have some guests over for, to watch the game, you want to elevate your cooking a little bit and not just give them a ham and cheese sandwich, but think about offering them this Cuban sandwich. So we're going to prepare our marinade for our roast pork first. One of the things that you need to think about when you make this is that it's great for leftovers after the holidays so if you made a roast pork for your holidays or you had a ham for your holidays this is a great addition to make um if you don't have time to roast your own pork if you live in a community like we do where there's plenty of latin restaurants you can go get some panine from down there and use that to make it with ham or you can go to your local supermarket we actually happen to have a local supermarket shop right next to us that roasts their own pork and of course they have ham there so if you want it in a rush you can go out to your supermarket get those deli meats already prepared and make it but if you want to make it from scratch kind of like we did then we're going to show you that today yes and i also want to say that this sandwich tonight we were debating over what we were going to make today and it's inspired by our our father, he was like, you know, um, uh, Bishop Joseph Roberts, he was like, well, why don't y'all go ahead and make a Cuban, the Cuban sandwich, make your famous Cuban sandwich. So that's, the, is, so our dish tonight is inspired by him. And um, I don't know, but I was, I, so I had to have a question. So with this Cuban sandwich, like, it's, do you have to use pork? Because you know, nowadays nobody can eat pork. <laughs> Like, wow. So that's the original way, right? Okay. But you can, can so you I, never, I never had a Cuban sandwich without pork, but there's a lot of alternatives. I would say that if you did a turkey or chicken, that would be the similitude of the roast pork. And if you did a turkey bacon or a turkey ham, that would be a similitude of ham. So I think you can get a similar flavor with that. Um, if you guys try it with the pork substitute or turkey or chicken product, let us know how you liked it. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of people don't, I mean, they're not into pork like we, we eat pork, but people eat meat. Well, For I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got, yeah, we got a lot of family and friends that don't eat pork. <laughs> So we're gonna make our marinade for our pork and you know, as always, we did prepare a little bit earlier so that we don't have to hold you too long, but the full ingredients, no, you can leave this right here. The full ingredients list is gonna be in the um, post-it. Yeah. All right, excellent. So we're gonna make our marinade and that marinade is gonna consist of orange juice, lime juice, olive oil, salt, pepper, cumin, paprika. And that's kosher salt and smoked back paprika. Yep. And brown sugar. So, so, we, mix, uh, so we mix them, I guess, all together until they're well balanced. Yep. And, and then, garlic. All right. So I wonder what the, um, I wonder what the 
Yeah, you put lime juice too? Yep, lime juice, orange juice, mm. cumin, paprika, salt, pepper, Something orange juice. juice. It's really potent. Very potent. It smells good. And so, so now we have our our um So we have a pork loin here. That's my hands off real quick for you. So this is all ready to go. I don't know, it looks like it's showing some chunks in here. That's fine. That's the garlic in there. So we have minced garlic. You can put it in a food processor if you like to get it a little smoother. Uh, we chopped up our garlic and minced it. So you can pour it right on top in the bowl there. Okay. So I'm just going to dump this. Let me try to move it over to the middle. Should I move it over to the middle, babe? No, that's fine. Right, right there. Okay. So it can get on the sides, too. No. Oh, just pour it in for now. Okay. Mm. Mm. All right. So, um, make, watch, make sure you get it all in. Don't worry about how it looks. It's all in. It's all in. It's all in. It's all over top and on the bottom. So right. I need to get my tongue so I can. Um, I'm going to throw some gloves on. Okay. Right. Are you going to get down and dirty, huh? Yeah. So I cook. <laughs> I like to put my hands in it. And you, you do that. I watch you do it. Alright, he, he's really, you know, my, my husband, y'all, he's very passionate about cooking. He, yeah, he, that he does his thing. You need another glove? No, this one is good. So okay. we're going to move that meat around there, make sure that the garlic and all those flavors are all in there. Once we have that, let's bring the pan over. Okay. That's a good one. And again, you just want to make sure you have a flat pan, a cookie sheet. Something again with a little leverage for the juices. And um, now remember, we put brown sugar in here, so it's not going to be a lot of juice, but there will be a little bit. Take your remaining marinade, pour it on top. Now, I do want to mention before this process, we will leave it in the container and let it marinate for about 40 minutes. We didn't do that today, of course, because we want to show you how we prepped it and got it in the oven. So after you put your marinade in there, you want to put it to the side, put it in the refrigerator for about 40 minutes, take it out, let it wait about 10, 15 minutes before you put it in the oven. We have our oven set at 450 degrees. It's going to cook for about 25 to 35 minutes, and then we'll take it out and let it rest for 10 minutes. You want to make sure that you get to an internal temperature of 145 degrees. Now, real quick, before you put it in the oven. So when you, like when it came out of the package, did you just, do you... Because, like, some people I know slice their, like, put little slices in it so that the juice can get down in there. No, I don't. Right. I don't do that. Just, uh, I tell you what, once you, if you let it marinate for about 30 minutes, it's going to absorb those flavors. You could even set this overnight to marinate. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm glad you asked that. Think about it. Now, if we were making a whole pork shoulder roast pork, now we will put some slits in there. We will put pieces of garlic in there to get up under the skin and things like that. Maybe do an ejection method, but this is a small pork loin. I think that the flavor is going to be intensely all around it enough that we don't have to slice it. Okay. Also, we want to hold the integrity of the meat so that it can keep moist as well. So that's why we're cooking it at a high temperature mm -hmm. and not cooking it and too long. You want to close it up? No, nah, let it stay okay. open just like that. Okay. So we're going in our oven now, which is set to 450 degrees. Okay. Close. Now, we already cooked some earlier, so we're going to start to actually prepare our sandwich with you guys in a few minutes. And while he's doing that, um, I just want to remind you again, make sure you head over to our YouTube channel. And I want to know, I want you to know that um, the, the videos that we have, they premiere every Wednesday um, night. Every Wednesday night between um, 6, 6 o'clock, 6 and 6.30. So you can head over to YouTube and watch it there as well. Um, Move it to the side. I'm going to cut a couple extra pieces of meat just so, so that we have enough. What do we have here? We have... Look like some honey ham, some honey ham. This is what this, the honey ham. And we already, my husband already sliced it up. Now did you have to, what did you do with the ham? So the ham, we bought a pre-cooked ham. It was in the netting when we bought it. We left the netting on and put it in the oven for a short time. 
to get hot all the way through, but it was pre-cooked already. So that one's pretty much ready to go. Uh, we cooked this one earlier. Look how, look at the juice just falling from it. Look how good it looks. Um, <laughs> for those, but for those of you who do eat pork, so, um, it looks really good. It really you, looks very good. You asked earlier about how the um, putting slits in there for the flavor. As you can see, that flavor is going all the way through. It's nice and juicy. You want it nice and moist, not too dry. So I think that would be enough to make us a sandwich to get started. And I think, you know, with the, with the Cuban sandwich, the pork is probably the main ingredient um, for the sandwich. Yes. So you want to make sure that you cook it right, you, you marinate it correctly, because that's going to be your main ingredient for this sandwich. You want to slice it nice and thin so that it's easy um, to chew. It looks chew. like this is about how thin we have it sliced. And while, since I picked up this, I'm going to go ahead and eat this. Go ahead, taste it. Let the people know how it tastes. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's really juicy. You can taste the it's cumin, really well. the brown sugar coming right through there. Mm -hmm. Tastes like... A, and it's not um, salty. I don't like salt, but this is not salty at all. Some pork that you get sometimes comes out really salty, but this is okay. This is not bad. Um, so if you don't live near a Latin market and you can't get a uh, Latin style roll to use for this, you want to use maybe an Italian roll or French baguette, um, grab mine and get it ready for you. Again, and... You want to make sure that you get your bread fresh. Um, when we were preparing this meal and getting the ingredients, we didn't buy the bread till the day of. You don't uh, you don't want to buy your bread too early in advance. You want to make sure that it's fresh. And um, our our deli here at our local supermarket, they they always have fresh um, bread, <coughs> fresh prepared bread. So. Um, you can, and, and again, you can make it how big, however big you, you want it. It don't have to be a particular size, whatever you like. Um, <laughs> however you want it, it, it's just, it, whatever you want to do. It's up to you. It's a big or as small as you want. And now it looks like he, he's getting um, some kind of base, not base, but spread some butter on the bread. Um, or now, I didn't want now. And we did a, run, a test run. I saw that he was um, spreading butter on the outside of the print and the inside. Now, in my head, I'm thinking that's overkill. Like, why well, we got to use all that butter? But again, it's a Cuban sandwich. And it um, makes the outside of the bread more crisp. Um, and it gives also that buttery taste. So we're going to start with the outside. We have some butter that we were letting get soft already. Yes, it does. I'm required for you to leave the butter out and make it room temperature. So making the spreading process easier. And so I guess, you know, and see, and look, this is a word. It's a word. See, look at God. This is how you can spread the word of God. Or just spread it all over. Coat the whole thing. Coat, coat the mind. Coat the heart. Coat the soul. Just coat it all. Um, inside and out. We want to make sure that we spread it. So just like, just like our shirt says, God's word is like butter. Spread it all over. Right. So we're going to make sure we wrap, we wrap this bad boy in some butter. Just like, you know, our lives. We got to make sure we're wrapping it. We got to make sure we're wrapping it in the word of God. But right. um, so we got our butter, so got spread. Our butter spread. And then we're going to go with our mustard. Our mustard's going Now, is that regular time. mustard? Because that's So good. you can use the type of mustard you like. Typically, yellow mustard is what's used. So I mix together a little bit of spicy mustard and yellow mustard. Okay. So the flavor can pop a little bit. That's a lot of mustard, man. Ooh. It's a lot of mustard, but we're gonna make the sandwich nice and healthy with a lot of a lot of meat inside. So we wanna make sure that we have enough mustard for that. Okay. So now we begin to get our sandwich set up before we put it on our panini press. Hot? Is it hot? Yeah, it's going to get hot. Just okay. came back on. This panini press, um, you can buy these. Walmart, I think Walmart has them. You can buy them Walmart. Depending on how big your sandwich is, you can fit two in here or you can fit one. But I think we're just going to do one at a time for today. All right, so we're going to start with our roast pork. And again, we're going to put a nice, healthy portion on here. Especially during football season, game day. This is a really, your friends are like something like this. 
Yeah, these, these are, um, and, and it's not long, it doesn't take really long to cook either for, to prepare. And if you can see, none of the, none of the meat is dry looking. Next, we're going to go for our pickles. We, and we, um, what, are we using, what kind of pickles are we? are we using dill pickles. Okay, we're using, uh, dill, is that the, um, butter? No, but it's a dill pickle. <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny, but no, it's a dill pickle. This is why it's called Steve. Listen, I'm learning. I'm learning. So why are we using that the dill, and why why are we not using the spears? So first of all, that spear is a little big for the sandwich. So it's, if you go to bite, it's gonna fall out. All right. So, so now that we have our roast pork and pickles on there, we just top the next layer with a healthy heaping of ham, and now we're gonna go for our Swiss cheese. Oh, oof, that sandwich is looking mighty hefty there. But see, that's how God do. He just drop it on you just like that. <laughs> just, just drop it right on you. So I'm going to put three nice size slices of Swiss on there. And I'm gonna make the now, dip. when I tasted it earlier, because again, I'm, I'm an American cheese girl. But when I tasted it earlier, it didn't even taste like it. Like, real, like you know, Swiss has that, um, like a sour taste, but... When I ate it earlier, then so open them up. So, All right, ooh, so this it, thing is hot, man. Nice and hot. We're going in. All right. All right. So do a nice your press. I am press it down. Okay. Let this get nice and hot until you start to see the cheese melt. So we're going to eventually see the cheese melt and then coming out the eyes of the sandwich. Once it does it. that, you'll see uh, that we're pretty much almost there. The plate of egg. Yep. Uh, looks like ours is going pretty good now. Um, the cheese is starting to melt. That's what we want to see on both sides. There you go. So, yes, um, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, and again, we're on YouTube. So, we appreciate y'all so, bear with us. I hope you guys can see the cheese starting to melt down there. So yes. some people might not like Swiss cheese when you eat it cold, but when it melts, it has a little bit of different taste. So hopefully you guys will try it with the Swiss. I don't think it'll taste bad with the American cheese, but keep in mind that American cheese is a little saltier. So if you're putting it with ham, that's going to increase your salt taste that you're putting in. So you might need to do something like use a mustard that has a little bit more sweetness to it to balance out the salt and sweet taste. Yes. So are we ready to take this bad boy off? Oh, uh, let's see how we Let's it. check it out. Oh, oh watch it. Yeah, he looks pretty good. Is it pretty hot? Hold it right there yep. for me. Mm -hmm. Get under there. Oh, that's good. That's good. All right. So let's turn this off. So here we have it. The Cuban prior to being cut. Now we, you, oh, you didn't put pickles on there. Oh, yeah. Okay. So. Here, um, again, is our finished product here. Uh, so now we're going to have, I guess, one of our production people come try and taste this. And we have right, so James is, Jr. Hello, hello. Is our son. He, he works um, our videos that y'all see. Um, he's going to try it. Ooh. Ooh, baby. I'm smiling all Moving too fast. As you can see in the inside, it looks really good. You can see all the layers on the inside. Ham, the uh, Swiss cheese, the pickles, and the roast pork. Uh, come on, come on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you hear that crunch? Oh, that's your plate, out. so have yeah. fun with it. <laughs> yeah, because you got juice. How is it? Tell, you got to just let us know what you're tasting. He need a napkin. <laughs> so, we, so we got four kids, so... They, they, on Thursdays, whatever we cook, that's going to be their meal for that night. Yes. And Normally, you. Go ahead. Come on. We're hot. Great. Exquisite. Extraordinary. <laughs> great taste. Everything comes together, come together very well. The cheese is a nice touch on top. The mustard is very nice. Good touch. Okay. okay. So, so good. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, again, he, he, can, he can take this with him. Well, I want a piece now. You want to taste it? Yeah. Oh, he coming back to steal his plate. Uh -oh. <laughs> you want me to taste it too? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Now, let me see. I don't want to really taste the pickles, but. 
and I don't like pickles, but the way the pork infuses with the cheese and the ham, you can't really taste the pickles like that. Mm. It's really good. So, you know, growing up in South Jersey, I'm an American cheese guy, but hey, it tastes great with the Swiss, so hopefully you guys have tried the way it traditionally um, is made. Yes. And again, you know, it's traditionally made with pork, but I can't stop eating it. If you wanna make if you wanna make something else, um substitute the ham and the pork, you're more than happy to. Whatever you like. That's our saying, whatever you like. Perfect so, for when you have leftovers. Yes, yes. And so um I would just wanna thank you. Okay. Really, really on okay. <laughs> um, we just want to thank you um, for joining us tonight. I wanted to tell them real quick. Um, so, when you make this, right, if you're going to make your roast pork, I know a lot of people aren't into saving their pork drippings, but oh my man, a good addition to this is to save the pork drippings, put you some potatoes and rosemary in it, and top it with the Swiss cheese. You have a real nice uh, side addition if you don't want to use chips for it. Mm, as a side dish. Mm -hmm. That was a good idea. A good idea. So again, okay, we just want to thank you for tuning in with us, for supporting us, um, for all your love, all your support, your words of encouragement. Um, I mean, it's just been overwhelming. Um, we just, uh, we can't, I just can't thank you enough. I don't know if you, you have anything else you want to say before we leave. Thank you for all the support. We're having fun doing this. Yes. Not something we expected to be doing in 2020. <laughs> But hey, we're making the most of the time. We're making the most of the pandemic. Yes. We're home a lot with family right now. So it's something that you can do to bring your family together. You know, days of old, we always sat down for dinner with the family. That was the time that we would talk to our kids about their day and talk to our parents about what's going on in our life and impart wisdom into our yes. youth. And we got away from that in America today. So I believe that using this time in the pandemic is a good time for us to get back to the things that we know are right to do. And that's getting with family, spending time, quality time with family, and imparting the things that you have to your family. Yes. And never give up on, never stop dreaming. Don't ever think that God can't pull something out of you that you think you can't do. In January, I'm telling you, I didn't know how to cook as much as I do now. I didn't even have this, I'm not even standing in the same kitchen I was standing in January. Um, so just, God would just take um, your division or the mission that you have and he'll just blow it into something else. And so, this is the mission. The mission is to show other people what God has shown us. So that's that's what we're here to do. And that's what we're here to spread God's word. Um, so again, like I always say, this is my wife can't cook, what some of us can't cook, and some of us can. But either way, we cooking. Y'all have a blessed night and blessed rest of the night.